Hey team, it's Daniel again with the Brazos Valley Boards and Varmints and we have Kevin with Nocturnal Solutions. And so today we are going to be doing a review of the iRay Infrared USA Rico G series. This is the Genie GL35. This is a 384 thermal scope that comes in right at $3,000. And guys, I'm telling you, as we get further and further into these companies competing harder and harder against each other, these 384 thermal scopes are looking so much better and better and better. And for right at that $3,000 mark, you're going to have a really hard time finding anything better than this, as long as it meets the other criteria of what you're looking for. As far as like base mag and that kind of stuff, man, this is going to be really hard to beat. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, so here's the actual scope itself. Now, as you can see, I still have some dirt and blood on it. I'm gonna have to get all this cleaned up, but y'all know that I've been actually using this thing. It's not something that, you know, just got done a bench test and, and now we're doing a review. This thing had some actual field use. So let's just kind of start from the front and work our way back. The lens cap is real nice. It's got a good positive click when it goes in and it's something that stays tight and in place wherever it is, whenever you stop touching it. So that's something I really like. You know, there's been other models of, of scopes out there before that clang and I, I'm not a big fan of that. So I really like how this one stays in place like it is. The focus ring is gonna be up front, very traditional place for all that. On the right hand side is gonna be this Picatinny rail. Now you would think that that's gonna be because this is compatible with the iRay laser rangefinders that you can plug into the port on the side. However, this model is not. The Genie series, that's part of the reason why that you get the cost savings is because that's some software that it does not have included inside of it. So it's still there because this is the same frame this is the same body style but that's not going to work inside of here so you still get the picatinny rail um, and the charging port is still in the same spot and the charging port you know charges both the internal battery and the battery that you have plugged into the side here um, and then also this is how you get the videos and pictures pulled off of it now like you're already seeing i i'm not going to talk about all of the specs that this thing is because that's gets real boring real quick so i'm just going to flash those up on the screen kind of as we go and again like i just talked about the battery on the other side this big chunk of thing hanging off to the side over here is where the extra battery goes in. I say extra because this has two batteries, which is pretty common what we're seeing nowadays, that you've got an internal battery here. Go ahead and bring that in, Kevin. And, uh, and then you've got an external one that is replaceable. So that way your internal one, you, you know, that's gonna be your backup that stays in there all the time. And then as your replaceable one burns out, you, you're, you're burning up the battery life on it, you can just flip this lever right here and then remove that battery and pop in a new one. Now, Kevin, you you pointed this out to me first on this, and I had the exact same problem. This is this battery exchange. It's going to be something that, if I'm going to explain it to you in, in just the, the best way I know how, I'm going to say that this is something that unless you have like outdoor man grip hands you know, like if you're if you're turning wrenches all day long or you're twisting pliers you're doing something that requires a lot of man grip strength all day um, unless you're doing that good luck uh, getting this battery out on your own now that's been with this one not everybody has had that exact same problem with this battery being in there so tight um, but it has been pretty common what you're seeing on the internet that a lot of people are saying, golly, this thing is so tight that to be able to get it out, they have to use a pair of pliers to get on to, you know, to be able to squeeze it enough to get it out. And actually, let me try to twist it here. I got to twist first. I think I've already got it twisted. Push and twist. Oh yes, that's right. You got to push and then twist. And you can hear Kevin over here is, is, is kind of coaching me through this. But golly. It's coming. And then this last, I'll finally get it with this hand. I did it earlier. Oh, there it goes. And now, now let me tell you something else about this. Now, Kevin, you, you chime in the way that you describe what you like about the fact that it's like this. No moisture is getting in there. 
Yeah. It's not, no water, no nothing, no dust, nothing's getting in there. Yeah, this is going to be it is waterproof. Sealed. Yeah, it is sealed. yeah. If you drop this thing in in the dirt, in the mud, like like you know, I, guys, you know, we're walking around hunting in the in these muddy spots that you got to cross this this little area to get to where they are. And I've seen this happen to me. It, it happens, and you don't have to be worried about that at all. This thing is sealed tight. Um, again, not all of them are are going to be this tight, but this one is. I've heard a lot of people on the internet have had the same exact problem. Um, it's not, it's not, a, we're not really, I shouldn't say a problem. It's just something that they realize they have to deal with. Um, but talking about battery, this thing has what's rated at 11 hours of battery life. And so that is a long time. Really, I don't know how often you're ever going to need to take out this external battery because if you're hunting with this thing for 11 hours straight, the hunt's probably over. Uh, you're probably going to go inside, uh, go catch some sleep finally, and then plug this thing into the side and just let it recharge everything. Um, you're probably not even going to need to take this extra battery out and put it on the external charger. Um, but if you do, you do get an external charger and you have a spare battery that comes with it, which is another great thing about this scope, is that you get a spare battery. Two batteries. Yeah. You know, these usually cost about $100 if you go through anybody else to get a spare battery that's proprietary to their thermal. So they are saving you 100 bucks right here by giving you this spare. So, Ira, thank you very much. You've been real great about sending extra batteries with your stuff. Wonderful. That, that, I love it, love it, love it. Next thing I want to talk about is the four button layout. You can see obviously this light gray one here is your power button and then you've got your magnification and then your menu and then your camera here. Um, and then the short presses and long presses do different things. Um, but all the things that you would expect out of a good quality thermal scope, yep, it does that. Picture in picture, it does the multiple zeros. Um, you know, all that's great and wonderful, works perfect, very user-friendly. Um, it comes with a really nice user manual. Um, it explains things very well. I, uh, the only time I used this was to figure out how to do the zeroing, which actually it was pretty self-explanatory as is. Yeah, once you get into it, it's really not that bad. Yeah, um, and really for figuring out anything else in the menu in here, I didn't have to use this at all because the, the, the menu system, the way they build this is, is really simple. Some of the buttons double press to get the pip um, yep. and, and whatnot. Scroll through your palettes, it's pretty easy. Yep. Now, that is one thing that, that I'm just not a big fan of is having to push like two buttons to turn a thing on or off. However, at the same time, the workaround for that would be to have to either put it way deep in the menu to where it's harder to get access to, or you'd have to find another place to add more buttons. So that, that is a thing, and typically I don't like that, but really after hunting with this for several nights, I had it memorized very quickly. I didn't have to go back and, and look at it and think about it and mess me up um, if I'm trying to get the picture in picture on or off or anything like that. It, it was super easy to use, easy to remember once I once I got through it the first time. Moving further back, you've got your diopter focus, which is pretty standard, and then you've got your collapsible eyepiece right here. Um, I always like these because they give you that you know a little bit of extra cushion protection in case somebody that doesn't know what they're doing gets their eyeball a little bit too close to that thermal and it pops them whenever they shoot. You know, because everybody likes to get like zoned into and watch this display you can get that thing as big as they can in their eyeball and then it pops them um, so that's always great you won't see anybody get with get a get a scope cut because of this thing is right here now on the bottom we have an american defense manufacturing mount um you know and guys y'all have heard everybody across all of the interwebs talking about how great these things are and that's standard everybody knows and loves that um this one came with it now, typically in the box, what you're going to see is going to be the standard mount, which is also QD, but it is set up for the more uh, bolt action style mounting system. And uh, there we go. Push the button here and that pushes it out. Um, so it is QD, but it's, it's, again, it's more set up for your bolt action rifles, not set up at nearly as well for your AR style rifles. So if you do want this extra, um, this 
upgraded mount that is going to cost a little bit more that's but at the same time guys we all know how much these things are worth it all right guys so that was the walk around of the close-up with it um kevin what are some things that you really love about this scope here easy to use okay Picture quality um, the app i know it's not the scope but the app true that it's really easy to use yep um Getting your pictures and videos, you don't have to just record on the app. You can record on the scope and pull it off with the app. Yeah. I like that. Uh, the picture quality has been amazing. Most people who buy the $3,000 and less, they're trying to really get their best bang for their buck out of this thermal scope, right? And when you say, hey, when you talk about the nice add-on features that this thing has that the other ones don't have, or this one's better, and then you start talking about how the app works so much smoother, it's like, that's one of those things that just put that in the really big win category. So yeah, true that. It flows easy. It yeah. transfers easy. Okay. Um, any other big thing jumping out at you that you're just like, man, I really love that, or should we move on to the next? The weight and the battery life. Yeah. And, and not having to buy batteries. Man, okay, you're hitting all the great points here. Um, 11 hours is what is what they're is what they're claiming. You you told me that you feel like you're actually getting a little bit longer than that, um, and that's that that's even better. You know, rather than like when you buy a truck, it says it gets 27 miles yeah. a gallon, and then all of a sudden you're like, nah, man, it's getting more like more like 20. They say this ain't no 27. No, so you're you're getting more than advertised. Um, so that's that's a great win, um, and then you know yeah you get that spare battery too. That's the next extra hundred bucks right there. And I never used it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and really thinking about it, um, I haven't either. I haven't used my extra because I just I lean that thing up in the corner, plug it into the side, mm -hmm. and I've never um, needed to take that thing out while in the field. Or plug it up when you're going down the road between sets. Yeah, it's true, true. Yeah, true. Okay, uh, let's move on to, uh, that actually segues perfectly into the, what we don't like about this scope. What we wish was better. Removing the batteries. <laughs> the only thing I can think of, that was, I carried a pair of needle nose pliers with me. Well, you know, and... and if it, I wanted to take it out. Being the, the random, not random, being the, the guy who grew up farming and ranching, I always have some kind of Leatherman or Leatherman equivalent. This one's a Gerber. Um, that's on me all the time. And so I, I see that and I hear that and I feel that. However, at the same time, we also just talked about how we kind of don't ever need to. Um, you know, we had to do it to give it a good thorough round, you know, thorough all over, go around everything. But really, we're not even, it, it's a it's a thing that's not a thing, you know? The only time I took it out is when we had rain and I just stored the gun because we weren't hunting. Yeah, yeah. And I just took it out just to make sure it wasn't in there. Yep, okay. Now, another big talking point um, when people are trying to decide um, what thermal scope to go with is going to be base magnification. So this one is a 3.0. Um, what are, how do you feel about that 3.0? It has its uses. Okay, elaborate. It, it may not be for everybody. Yep. Um, Who's it not for then? I would say close range. you close range guys? Yep, yep. I mean, I hunt close range and it took some time to get used to. Yeah, when yeah. When you're in that 40, 30 yards from your pigs, Yep. it's hard to get from one to the other real quick. For sure, absolutely. Now, you back up into the 70s, 80s, which most people probably shoot from, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, man, yeah. I, I agree with all that 100%. And being 384, that higher base mag, you don't have to zoom in. True. So you don't True. lose your resolution. Now, talking about zoom, you know, the, it does have the picture in picture built into it. But one thing that I noticed is that whenever I um, moved, whenever I re-zeroed the scope for the actual, um, for, the, for the rifle and load that I was shooting, and then I went back to, to hunt later on, the zero of the scope did not match exactly perfectly in the center of the picture for the picture in picture. 
Now, mind you, my crosshairs, where they yeah. were on the animal, wherever I put it, like, the crosshairs were true on both. Like, so on on the main screen. But the crosshairs weren't lined up with the picture in picture. And yep. Like it, a straight line it, down. To it was, back. if I had to move that thing three inches left, well, then in my picture in picture, the whole thing was moved three inches left. It was, it was one of those deals. But if you put the crosshair <laughs> on a penny, they it, were on the penny on both Both pictures. of them were on that penny. Yes. Yep. So that was odd, but at, after noticing it and then double checking like, yep, this all still works just like it should, not a factor at all. So it was something, I, again, something I noticed, but not a big deal, whoop de doo It's actually not a deal at all. Um, but when I don't want people to, to take this thing out of the box and, and look at that and see this and then and get scared. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then they, they're really questioning whether or not they should have bought this one. Man, I got the wrong one. Why'd I do this? This piece of junk, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Believe me, it is not a factor. I mean, I, I hunt with picture in picture all the time. Okay, yeah. I like to take my first shot off picture in picture, then after that, go to the big screen. Well, and see, I do the same thing. Now, for my video, um, I, I like to take picture in picture off. I think it just looks better. It looks cleaner, especially when you're trying to resize or edit anything. Um, but whenever, like, man, tonight's just kind of not a video night. I'm just kind of doing my thing. I don't think the picture in picture shows up on the video. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't think it does. I'm going to have to look into that. Oh, I got some right here. Oh, you do? I do. All of these should have been picture in picture. Oh, it don't? Yeah, picture in pictures does not show up on the videos. Look out. See, that's the app we're talking about. Like, it's that smooth. Yeah. So you do everything picture? Yeah. I do everything picture in picture. Well, and it does not show up on the video. Well, now I feel like an idiot for turning it off every time. Because I like picture in picture. Well, I didn't notice it until I guess I hunted. And then you said it, you turned it off. and I, it just See, this is why we got to do more of these things together. Because you're noticing things that I don't even think about. And then I get to rambling about something. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me straighten you out there, brother. So, great. Okay. Um, the All right, so that was one thing that's like, it's it's something that you may notice, but not a factor. What else are the the, the kind of key walking away points when talking about this scope? I don't feel like it's as grainy when you zoom in for some reason. Okay. I don't know if you noticed that if you zoomed in at all. Um, the picture stays pretty clear. Yes. In my opinion. Yep. Um, different from other brands that we've used. You zoom in, you start getting the square boxes real pixelated. I feel right. like this one actually stayed pretty smooth man this is this is a wonderful scope i love it the heat pickup was great i mean distance oh yeah we were able to we were able to see out there and i would say for pigs i was we were probably able to identify 400 yards sure um you know the the detection range on this is listed at 1750 yards mm -hmm. And, and and that that's that's kind of where it should be for the numbers of what of what it is however and but that's also the next question how, how far can you clearly identify the the target animal that we're going after um, and that's a whole new can of worms as far as like tall grass short grass you know humidity yep yep um, all grain you know just you know and then like we also like if you know the area like this is a cornfield um, there are no cows in a cornfield, uh, like it's, it's either going to be a coyote or a pig. You got to take your pick, right? Well, that could be um, an armadillo. Right. Or, you know, it could be a deer. <laughs> and then you start, you know, start looking for, um, body movement, man. You know, talk about the armadillo. Um, I had another guy the other day that just swore this was a pig right in front of us. And then I, I actually, I had, I handed him this cause he had a 384 that, that is several years old now. And I handed him this one, and he just kind of wanted to stop looking through his 384. And, it did, and it's like, man, that is not the critter you think it is. How about you look through this one? He's like, oh, wow, this is great. This is great. Like, yeah, it absolutely is. Okay, man, I think we ran out of things to talk about with it. I felt like this was a pretty good review. Um, anything else you want to add in before we shut this down? Not that I can think of. Okay. I'm happy with it. Um, guys, again, I want to remind you that we got this 
from Paul Tyson over at GearTheHunt.com. Obviously, I've got his stuff up on the screens right now. Um, I want to say thank you to him for letting us review this scope, letting us get to hunt with it, letting us get footage with it. And if that means that you really like this, um, I'm going to ask that you go over to him and buy this through him because I can tell you that I'm on Facebook a whole bunch and this is one of the most responsive people and he's just such a straight shooter and he's going to walk you through what's going to be best for you and this one is a really good option. And he's going to help you out with the sale. He's been, yeah. he's been great. Yeah. Um, Questions, he, anything. He's, he's always there. Yeah, um, I, I'm watching all the time people just posting something in one of the thermal groups and then he chimes in with either the answer or call me, here's my telephone number, and we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through because that's like a longer than a text answer. Um, and the guy, the guy's great. The guy's just, just I, I go to GearTheHunt.com, buy through Paul. Um, he, he, he really is the customer service guy that you yes. really want when you buy a multi-thousand dollar thermal scope. So, all right, man, anything else? I think that's good. Till next time. Cool. Guys, I hope that y'all enjoyed. Once again, I'm looking forward to making more of these with Kevin from Nocturnal Solutions. And I hope that y'all enjoy this. If y'all did, um, do all the things you're supposed to do on social media. Like, share, subscribe. Um, send it to your grandma, uh, give me more places to hunt, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> so, guys, take care. Love y'all. Bye.